So now we are, uh, you know, moving on to this other board that we have, uh, which is this uh, BLE Nano 33 cents uh, Arduino board. And this board is different from the uh, earlier Arduino boards that you may have used, uh, Uno or Nano or whichever one, because this board is capable of a lot of IoT, uh, Internet of Things projects and a lot of AI ML projects. Uh, so that is what we are going to learn. So let's start with understanding the bigger picture and then uh, we'll do some practical projects. So uh, when we talk about AI and ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, normally we are talking about very you know uh, big machine learning models and these models are residing on, on servers or server farms because they need a lot of computing power and that's what we call the cloud. So the machine learning model is residing on the cloud. So for example, when we when we were using a Google Teachable Machine, that's how it was working. That uh, we were calling Google Teachable Machine on our PC, but when we were training the model, et cetera, the machine learning model was residing in the cloud. And that is why when we called those models on in Scratch or PictoBlocks, they had to, there was some time because you know data was sent to the server the server or the uh, you know uh, processed it and then sent the response back okay so this is typically how machine learning models run they need a lot of computing power and uh, so they reside in uh, on on the cloud and then there are all these devices in which uh, you know we can run some sort of machine learning uh, like a pc or a laptop uh, or maybe some sensors or mobile phone or industrial robots and all but that's how uh, they connect. They connect to the uh, to the server and the processor. So, so some data may be uh, you know being collected uh, uh, in the laptop or in the PC. Like I'm talking about Google Teachable Machine, and then that bit of data or whatever the computer recognized is sent to uh, the server where the machine learning model works. It it makes whatever prediction it has to make and sends the result back. Okay, so this is typically you know the architecture of machine learning and these devices uh, which connect to the cloud which are in the hands of the end user whether it's you know uh, customers like us or industrial you know factories or something uh, so these devices are called devices on the edge edge means this is a network so somewhere there is a cloud and there are you know in the cloud there are server farms and these devices are in the hands of users and they are called devices on the edge, okay? And devices on the edge normally talk to the uh, the server in when it comes to machine learning, and that's how the system works, okay? But increasingly what is happening is uh, we are saying whether we can embed some intelligence in the edge device itself, such that it doesn't have to talk to the main server. So this was, you know, the proposition some uh, some years back, and now a lot of devices have come, which are devices on the edge, but they are very smart devices. They are capable of, uh, you know, running machine learning models. Uh, so when we are talking about embedding computing ability in everyday things, so this devices on the edge could be all these things. It could be your, uh, you know, the smart uh, watch. Uh, that you may have it may be a cctv which is smart uh, it could be even you know these days refrigerators and coffee machines sometimes they have you know smart uh, uh, some level of intelligence built in you get all kinds of you know uh, uh, bulbs now which are intelligent and you can control them uh, so what we are saying is when devices on the edge have some sort of intelligence then that is what we are talking we, we say it's internet of things uh, so all these things are intelligent. They are capable of, you know, taking some decisions and they can do both. They can do some computation and they can also store data. Okay. Uh, so this is called edge computing. So what, so, so, so understand the difference between the architecture in the first architecture, the, the computing or the whatever machine learning model was in the cloud. And then we had this machine that was talking to the cloud and that is how these ML uh, you know, models were running. But increasingly, we are talking about embedded computing where 
we are embedding this computing in the edge device and in the edge device itself, uh, some sort of uh, machine learning model can work. And these are very, very useful. I'm just giving one example. Let's say there is a, a pipeline and it's in the, in the desert. It's an oil pipeline. It's somewhere far in the desert uh, where it's very difficult to, uh, you know, uh, go there and, you know, check it every day. And uh, this is a pressurized gas line. So you have to monitor it. Okay. So I'm saying in the older model, what would happen is there would be sensors. So uh, this pipeline would have sensors, but the sensors, whatever data they were detecting, they would send it to the server uh, and the server would process that data and give the decision. So if the pressure was high and the temperature was high, then the data would be sent to the server. Server will run the uh, uh, machine learning model and it might say shut down the pipeline or some some whatever inference it is drawing, right? So this was the traditional one that, you know, the sensor detects something and it sends it to the cloud, uh, the cloud, the decision making happens in the cloud and then the information is sent back to the sensor. What we are saying is in edge computing, we are talking about, can we embed some artificial intelligence in the sensor itself or in the device itself? And that device is called a device on the edge because you know, it's, it's far away from the center or the, you know, main cloud. Uh, so if we can do this, we are saying this sensor then becomes, or this device then becomes an artificially intelligent device. Okay. And we are talking about embedding some sort of intelligence here, some sort of ML model here. And one such, uh, example is this, uh, Arduino nano, you know, uh, BLE, uh, BLE 33 cents. Okay. So this new, uh, uh, Arduino is capable of running small uh, machine learning models right on this device. It doesn't have to talk to some server and the server will do the processing and you know then send the inference back. It doesn't work like that. You can put some uh, simple models right here. Okay, so that's the power of uh, you know this uh, this new Arduino, and that is what what we are going to look at. Okay, and in this, if you've got the kit. So this already has, I'll just talk about the sensors and all. It already has many sensors embedded. Uh, it also has a microphone embedded. And it, since you have got this, uh, you know, edX uh, 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 kit, in your kit, you will also have, have a camera. So I'm saying that uh, not exactly Husky lens, but this is a camera. And when you will attach this camera to your, uh, uh, this Arduino uh, Nano, uh, it will become like a vision sensor. Okay. And it is more powerful than Husky lens because it, it is capable of doing a lot more than Husky lens. But I'm just explaining that, you know, this is the kind of uh, trajectory we are following that we talked about uh, uh, AI ML, we talked about computer vision. And I said that in last year training, we did dancing with AI, we did Google teachable machine, we did picto blocks. Uh, there, the intelligence was uh, in the server and we were just calling the models and here, uh, then we went on Husky lens, which had this embedded intelligence. So Husky lens is also uh, a device with embedded intelligence. And now we are talking about a more powerful thing, which is you can program Husky lens has those seven things and that's it. Uh, you can't do anything more, but with this, you can do a lot more. So that is how, you know, everything is kind of connected with what, whatever we have been doing since last year, when we are saying that this, uh, utter tinkering lab is becoming like a AI lab. Okay. Uh, so when we create models for these edge devices like this Arduino, okay, uh, because they have very tiny memory, they are not like big, you know, computers. So we follow a different framework, uh, programming framework. It's called TensorFlow Lite. So TensorFlow Lite is like one uh, kind of a programming framework, which we are going to, which we use to create uh, machine learning models for devices like this. There are several other frameworks, but we are going to uh, use TensorFlow Lite. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so this is what Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense is all about. It can run machine learning based edge computing applications. Okay. And uh, you can search for it, uh, you know, later if you, there are many videos and all, but I, I'm saying in any kind of situations where you need intelligence at the edge, 
like i gave you the example of the pressurized gas pipeline uh, i read about another project where which was about some wildlife tracking so they wanted to track some movements of some elephants wild elephants i think and so they used this uh, this arduino okay so i'm just saying that that this is the difference between uh, you know the other devices and these edge devices because we can make some basic machine learning model using tensorflow light uh, embed it uh, in inside this and then leave it in remote locations okay uh, so so that is what we are going to learn and we'll use some pre made examples uh, uh, you know to uh, see some functionalities of of uh, this ble sense and uh, so tensorflow light like i said is it's a it's an open source model developed by google and tensorflow light is the same tensorflow but meant for these uh, you know devices on the edge because it compresses those machine learning models it keeps them very simple and that's why they can work on uh, you know uh, uh, these devices don't have very big memory they don't have very high computing power but they can still run those those simple machine learning models okay so those are the advantages of uh, uh, you know this device and why i am explaining the advantages is that what i was telling you yesterday that whether you actually make models or not is one thing but when it comes to something like manak awards or any other you know global innovation challenge then being aware of what is edge computing and you know what all is possible with these devices is very important right so the important part of this these devices is that they don't require a large memory so there are machine learning models they are still ai models but they don't require large memory they are very low power consumption okay in fact this device works at 3.3 volts okay it doesn't work at 5 volts the all other arduinos work at 5 volts they, this one works at 3.3 volts so if you connect it with the usb it doesn't matter because there is a automatic voltage regulator which will work but let's say you don't connect it to a usb you connect it to a power supply you you won't supply 5 volts okay you will supply 3.3 volts it's like micro bit uh, so it it works on very low voltage and that is what i meant that if in the wild i want to leave some sensors you know like tracking wild elephants then i can't go and change the battery uh, you know i just need the device to work on that battery for let's say 6 months or maybe you know solar powered or something like that okay so uh, they require very little memory they require very little power consumption and they are fast in decision making because latency means that if the device was on the edge but it was talking to some server then the internet connection to the server and back may take time it may break down okay so in the case of our uh, pressurized oil pipeline we can't uh, you know do that we want that if the pressure temperature increases maybe the pipeline has to be shut down so we need intelligence on the edge and that those are the types of advantages that you know uh, are there with these devices so when you are working with your students and you are you know asking them to do projects using this device for manak and all these are the things you have to keep in mind and say that uh, you know this is where you can use it privacy is a big thing because let's say uh, let's say i so i have a, a, a uh, an iphone and my iphone is tracking hundreds of things if i have allowed it to regarding health right so number of steps i take maybe i even want to you know put my blood pressure data or you know some some other uh, health data now the problem is that this device will talk to the cloud and i don't want to share my data with whoever is the provider okay so the good part about these devices is that once i run the put the uh, model here let's say some sort of a intelligent uh, blood pressure monitor or something i make and i make it with this device there is no privacy issue because the data is not being sent anywhere the data is residing right here so that's a big advantage of uh, uh, you know uh, when we say that uh, it's a edge based device is also intelligent and then internet connectivity is not required so little power uh, little memory uh, uh, no internet connectivity those are the places where you will say we can use edge uh, computing uh, uh, ai based edge computing okay so that's like the uh, you know background about why we are learning about this uh, uh, nano 33 ple sense and the newer models of uh, uh, arduino have this ai uh, ml capability and of course they are also iot devices uh, okay so in nano 33 ble sense a uh, lot of sensors are embedded 
so that's an interesting thing to understand because you know like arduino nano uh so arduino nano doesn't have any uh sensor on board right if i have to connect a sensor i have to use these pins and you know then use an external sensor and the reason last year and all we had started with microbit is that microbit has lots of on board sensors right so this the, there is a light sensor there is a sound sensor there is a touch sensor and so forth so we had started with microbit because it's easy to program and it's easy to learn uh, you know how the sensors how do sensors uh, work in a smart system but in in the older arduinos that was a problem but in this new arduino the new arduino is a bit like microbit in the sense that it has sensors which are on board okay uh, and it it is more powerful than microbit and uh, it also has i think more memory than microbit uh, so it has these sensors it has a sensor which you know uh, it's called a nine axis inertial sensor basically it means there is an accelerometer so if you remember in microbit there is an accelerometer it can detect you know left right shake and up down shake and all that so that shake uh, or gesture or whatever can be recognized in uh, this nano 33 ble sense okay it has a gyroscope so it can measure angular velocity it has a magnetometer so if it's in the mag in presence of a magnetic field it will recognize it uh, you know magnetometer is also there in in your microbit so uh, it has these sensors then it has a humidity and a temperature sensor built on the board okay it has a, a barometric uh, sensor so you can measure pressure uh, it has a digital microphone it it does some very basic recognition but you can do what are called wake words so wake words are you know like hey siri so hey siri is a wake word for iphone uh, it hey siri the system is always listening to that hey siri and when somebody says hey siri it wakes up okay so you can have those kind of wake up words uh, uh, on this because there is a microphone and you can build a simple model to recognize some uh, you know some basic words like yes no uh, something like that okay uh, so it has a digital microphone it has a gesture sensor uh, which is what we are going to use today so it can recognize some because it has those gyroscopes and all it can do some like if i do a swirl it will recognize the swirl uh, so again the question is how is that useful so it could be useful for example if you're making some sort of a industrial robot and i had i had this in my arm and i was moving it and it was you know in turn moving some robotic arm right so i'm saying that is how gestures are useful or uh, you know maybe i wanted to paint something with gestures uh, you know so those are some examples but my point is that uh, uh uh when we are looking at this you should know the capability of of the board because that will help you you know help your students come up with ideas for you know uh, innovation challenges uh it has a proximity sem sensor it has a light color and a light intensity sensors so all these sensors are right on the board uh of uh this uh, uh, nano 33 ble uh, uh arduino and we will learn how to use a few of them okay so we will just learn some basic uh, sensors that are there and how to read them and how to use them and later on you know you can think of creating more complex projects and i'm saying because now you also know how to connect your husky lens so you could use the camera that you have got uh, which is this camera in the kit or you can use a husky lens so i'm saying that's where your imagination will come in that you want to build some autonomous vehicle or some you know industrial robotic arm or something and you want to use husky lens and you want to use these uh, all these sensors on on board this you can do that so i'm saying that you can use this as a regular a regular arduino right that's not a problem it will work like a typical arduino nano uh, so you can whatever projects you have made earlier for uh, using arduino they will all work uh, on this board in addition it has the sensors uh, and it has a memory and it's capable of some uh, machine learning uh, so you can make those additional projects uh, with this with this thing okay uh, so uh, let's now get into how will you use it okay so like with any arduino board two things you always have to do uh, you have to make sure that your arduino ide recognizes the board and it recognizes the port to which it is connected so if you have not already done this when we will take a break uh, then you should install 
uh, this board. Now the interface for you might be different because I'm using a Mac, so this is the interface for me. But in the IDE, somewhere there will be a boards manager. And in the boards manager, you go and search for something like BLE33 or something like that, and it will come up with boards. This is the board you need to install, which is called Arduino Embed OS Nano. Okay, uh, because this is the board which, if you read the description, it says that uh, uh, it is meant for Arduino Nano 33 BLE. So this is the board you need. Uh, if you did the last project with Husky Lens, then you may have already installed this board. If not, you will have to uh, you know launch the IDE, search for the board, and install that board. And once the board is installed and you have connected, remember you have to connect it with the USB. Once it is connected and the IDE is launched, then you have to make sure it's connected to the right port. So these two things are essential. I mean, you know, standard thing with any Arduino board, it should recognize the board and it should recognize uh, the port. Okay. Once you have done these two things, this is the last step I'm explaining and then uh, we'll take a break so that you can try these things out. Uh, we have to install some libraries. Okay. Uh, now, fortunately, these are not like Husky Lens libraries. They are directly available uh, uh, in the IDE, so it's very easy to install. I'm just going to show you the first one, and uh, then I'll stop and I'll let you install uh, whatever I've said. Okay. So the library we want to uh, install is called Harvard underscore Tiny ML. You remember some parts of it that should be enough. Okay. So then uh, you launch the IDE. So you launch Arduino IDE. In my case, uh, my uh, you know uh, board is connected. Let me start a new sketch so that it's not confusing. Um, so this is a blank new sketch. Okay. So I'm saying in my case, I've got the board manager here. So wherever you've got the board manager, it might be up in you know tools and wherever you can search for the board manager. And then I'm saying you should search for BLE, and you will get this Arduino embed OS nano board. In my case, I've already installed it. So it's uh, not giving me the option, but in your case, it will say something like this install. So you'll click and install this. Okay. So once you've installed the board, you will check that, uh, you know, your board is properly connected. So like for now, my board is not connected. So I'm just going to connect the USB. Uh, so once I connect the USB, now I can see it's connected to the right uh, uh, port. So I'm saying, okay, so now my board is connected to my uh, Arduino IDE, step one. Step two, let's install one library, okay? So you will go to library manager, wherever it is in your IDE, and we are searching for a library called Harvard. So just search for Harvard, and you will get this one. It's called Harvard underscore tiny ML. Again, I have already installed it, but in your case, it will say install. Just click and install. Okay, so I'm going to take a pause now. I'll let you do, do these two steps, then we'll continue. So if, if you have installed a uh, Harvard Tiny ML X library, then uh, following the same thing, go to the library thing, uh, and search for these two libraries also and install them, uh, Arduino BLE. So I forgot to mention that your Arduino has a Bluetooth. Okay, so we will, in the next project, we will use the Bluetooth. So we need this library. So install the Arduino BLE library and also another library called Arduino LSM9 DS1. I leave them on the screen. Uh, so this is the library you need to run the, to read the accelerometer sensor, the magnetometer sensor and the gyroscope, which is on your uh, BLE board. So please install these two libraries and then we'll, we'll continue. So, uh, if you have installed uh, those libraries, then let's go back to the IDE. Okay. So uh, in the IDE, you go to file examples and go down to 
the uh, Harvard Tiny ML library that you have installed. Okay, so it's the same what we did last earlier with Husky Lens. It will appear as a library, uh, as an example. And in that example, you have all these other examples, hello world, magic wand, ma micro speech, uh, any of this. Uh, so in this, launch micro speech. Okay, micro speech. I'm repeating the steps. Once you have installed the Harvard Tiny MLX library, go to file, examples, go down, Harvard Tiny MLX, and in the examples, you launch the micro speech, this one. So this is the micro speech once you have it. Okay. All right. Okay. So once you have it, just make sure that your board and your uh, port both are correct. If they are both correct, it should say, you know, nano 33 BLE is the board and whatever is your uh, port. If they are both correct, then just click the arrow and send the program to your uh, micro bit, uh, sorry, to your uh, uh, Arduino. Okay. It will take some time. It's an ML program. Uh, since there are so many, if you look at the tabs, there are so many things here. So it will take some time for the uh, for the sketch to get transferred. But just pay attention, uh, just see the screen because I've already done it. I'll show you what you have to do. So once you have transferred it, it'll take some time. Once you have transferred it, you open your uh, uh, your serial monitor, okay? So when you open your serial monitor, basically this micro speech program is like a wake up word. Okay, so now you imagine what I was saying that uh, all like your Google has a wake up word, your your Apple has a wake up word. Uh, so for the Apple, it's called Hey Siri. So basically there is some ML program constantly running in your Apple phone, which is listening to this word called Hey Siri. Okay, so like that, this micro speech is a small uh, already made uh, ML program, which can recognize two words, yes and no. Okay. So it's everything they have already done, everything they have made, the model, everything you have just transferred the whole program. Now we want to test whether it is recognizing yes or no. Okay, there is an onboard microphone. So once the program has got transferred to your Arduino, you open the serial monitor. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to explain, then I'm going to open it. And then when I say yes or no, it should recognize it. Okay, so let's try. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. So if you see at the bottom, uh, you know, in the bottom of my screen, it, it's it, it's recognized. It's not always recognizing. So right now it's saying heard unknown, heard unknown because I'm not using those two words. Okay. But I'll try again. Yes. No, 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 yes. Okay, so I, I will stop here because your program, it will take some time to compile and to send. Once you've done this, test it. Test yes or no, open the serial monitor and see whether it's recognizing or not. If it is, then, you know, uh, everything is working fine. So I will uh, give you a small break and then uh, we'll continue.